case you have any questions, in case you have any comments, always feel free to post them on the chat at any particular point. So, Chesco, I think I'll hand it over to you. OK, thank you very much. All right, so today's talk is about um, Power Apps uh, UI design. Okay, so it involves a lot of things, and we are going to see through a walkthrough to all those kind of aspects that when it comes to UI and UX. But this talk is mostly going to be based on UX design because we can't embrace all the, all of all of these aspects today or in a one single talk. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Chesco I. And Julia was trying to murder my name, but I kind of discovered it. Uh, so I am an application developer at Multitrend ICT Solution. I do a little bit of graphic designing. I blog. I'm a tech technology enthusiast. I'm a bilingual, so I speak French, I speak English. And I'm trying uh, to speak, uh, to learn Spanish also. So uh, I like video games on free times, and the, the game that I mostly like is Warframe. I'm not fan of football games. I'm not fan of football games. Sorry to disappoint those who like football. So today's talk, let's see what our content today. Now our content we have, uh, we will talk about who is this talk for, first of all. Who are those that are benef who benefit from this talk? And um, the UIs, uh, the UX, UI, the difference between these two concepts. We also talk about understanding the user that we are designing the app for. Also, uh, when starting, how to use, uh, which screen to pick, which one to come first, and secondly. Also, how to navigate between the app when we are designing for some for for users you know uh, how to present the data in either columns in the tables since we are talking about canvas uh, in paragraphs so the color harmony too will be part of this talk today how to colors when you are designing uh, the text and the type phrases the branding which is very important for companies and organization and since uh, Power Apps is basically for organizations and co, so this should be a good aspect to talk about. Also, the pace and the responsiveness. How good is your app? Good. All right. So, first of all, who is this for? So, this is not for uh, for you to become an expert when it comes to designing an app. So you won't tell me at the end of this discussion, you become an expert in designing uh, power apps. No, but it will give you a good understanding, a package for you in case you're trying to design your app. Next time, you know, for, for you to start following some kind of, some kind of pattern, then of how to, how to put the layout of your app, uh, how to understand the uses the, of your, your end users actually. So, so basically, uh, this is who the, this talk is targeting. So it's all, mostly uh, people the developing apps uh, nowadays are uh, is a whole team. You know, you have uh, uh, the software engineer, you have the product manager, you have uh, uh, the US UI designers and co. But in Power Apps, you only have uh, maybe a citizen developer an app maker or a pro developer. Basically, Power Apps environment doesn't, it doesn't require too many people to, 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 to do this work. So this is for all of those guys. All right, so what is the difference between these two? UX, UI, uh, it's somehow different. Yeah, it's different. So, so we have the UI the user interface. It is an intermediate between the devices or the person. So what actually shows in front, the graphic, the beauty of the app, the colors, layout, the buttons, those are called the UI. 
on the other hand, the UX, the user experience, is how the person interacts with the app, how the person gets the result of uh, when using the app, how the navigation experience look like when the person is using the app. And these are some of the things that you need to know to be able to improve your app designing. So you look at the UI, is how the app will look like, the colors, the buttons, the position of galleries, the labels here, controls here, good. And also the UX, it is how the user will, will access the app now, how his day-to-day -day activities on the app will look like. That is actually the UX. And let me try and explain it a bit more with this. So in this image here, you see that here is the UI and here is the UX. So the UI here is the way the field is designed. Very beautiful. And now people using this UI are rather using the other side. So meaning instead of this road to be at this level like this, it turned out to be straight. So you don't need to cross, you just go straight forward. Actually, this is how the UI and US represent themselves. OK. So the different when you look at these two um, apps that you are seeing over here. We have um, um, apps whereby you can see one with enough space and then just buttons. It has a, a black uh, label test which is the, the title of the app on top on I, and then the background, which is blue, and it make a bit hard on the eye to look at this. So the, this is the title bar, so, and it's also uh, not functional. It's just there, doesn't make any sense. So. And um, you have about, you have help, you have roots, you have map, uh, which actually don't, don't make total sense, because when you open the app, you don't need to go to about or help. Maybe you should go to the map or your route. If this app is actually meant for field technicians and co, then I'm, I'm sure you'd rather use put map or route in top here before about and help should follow. And also, uh, no graphical interface here. It's just a plain white. It's blue. And Recognize it, uh, that is uh, the power apps blue that is all over here. Now, on the other hand, you have the space well utilized. You have the title app that is just at the small corner here because you won't need the, the title of the app to be all over the app. So just at the portion here in this corner is quite okay for it. And you could see also that the title bar is quite functional. You have a search bar here and you have an application button. Now, the, ref, the rest of the blank screen is just used with, to cover it as a map, which will, which will help somebody navigating through this. And you could see also the navigation added down here. So it also highlights when you select a, an option or a menu, you see that it is highlighted. So helping to give more contrast when you are using the app. So the appearance of the icons here, quite beneficial. The way the map is put on the screen using all the interfaces is very good. So if you are the one they give you these two app, which one will you prefer? You see that? So it could be. Um, you will be using this and you realize that now this, this won't fit or your user will be using this and realize that doesn't make sense or they won't feel using it and they just have to drop it and your app will be there. You're not using it. Okay. So when you compare those two apps that you, you view right now, you will notice that we, there are some changes that were done in the second one, that is the US and the other one in the UI. So we did something, some correction, but all those corrections were done within the power apps. Okay, so it's not that somebody went to create a design in um, in Adobe SD or in Photoshop, in Sketch. No, it's all done in power apps. 
and notice that all those changes were made in the menu side too, whereby you see the, the map coming first, the route, and the rest follows. Then good. So, and there here come the question, what did the user actually need? Because you have to know what the, 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 the end user need before you proceed with this. Um, understanding the user. So how do you understand our users? So you don't need to write uh, a, a long document for, for the user to, to ask him uh, all, all sorts of questions. There are just some few uh, key questions that you need to ask them, but not if they want a, a clear view of how the app will look like. Like, uh, can you give me the way you want the app to look like? The colors, no. Straightforward, no. You don't do that. So there are some questions that you ask, and these are this. You have, what is your role? So the person you approach, what does that person do, actually? So what is your normal workflow? So when you're using this app, how do you normally use it? Or where do you start from? What is the process of the uh, of the solution of uh, what the app is coming to solve? You can get it. And on what do you, device do you often use this 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 kind of solution? Is it uh, on a mobile phone, on a tablet, on a desktop? You know, uh, it could be somebody on the field. You will need a, a mobile phone. And somebody in the warehouse may need a, a tablet, and somebody at the office uh, may need a, what do you call it, a desktop uh, app. Um, and in what circumstances do you use your app? So do you use your app uh, just on the field? Do you use your app at the office? Do you use your app at the warehouse, or do you use it all simultaneously, meaning the uh, Someone at the office can also go to the field, so you need the app to be responsive at that moment. So those are some of the information you need to gather. And also, you need to add, what are you doing with the app often? So what are the first thing you do with the app and the secondary thing to know what to put, to put uh, at the first position and what to put in the sub? So what areas are the functionalities of the app? The most sensible part of the of the app. Okay. So, so when you ask about what is your role, so you know um, what you do actually in your office. There, are you a cashier? Are you a field manager? Are you a, a dispatch manager? And those things. No. So based on those answers, you you know how to structure your app. So also the workflow. What is your normal work? The app should reflect the workflow of the user in the simplest way. So not need to complicate the process, but a very simple way so that the end user will be able to use the app. And also on which device that the app is mostly used. Like you all say, you know, see I said before, on tablet, on, on mobile, and on desktop. So if it is multiple device, then you need to know how to, to create the app. If it is on a tablet, you know how to arrange that one for only tablets. And if, you, if it is for a mobile phone, you also know how to arrange it for that. OK, next question. In what circumstances do you use the app? OK, so the app can be used in the office, in the vehicle, see on the go, in the cold weather, or depends. So imagine if the app is used in the office, some of the, the icons must be OK. You know, maybe it's more is OK for a desktop stream to see. But what if the person is? I'm sorry, Chesco, you just muted yourself. OK, I think somebody yeah. muted me, sorry. <laughs> As I was saying, um, in what circumstances do you need to use the app? Um, so on the go, in the office, in the vehicle, and so. And I was explaining that on the go, somebody in the car like that may need uh, the icons to be bigger for him to be able to touch and press the app easily. 
but uh, someone in the office with small icon are okay. And if the weather is cold and the person is wearing gloves and cool, then the apps, uh, the icons need to be way bigger for the person to press on it. Okay, so which function you often use and which one is second? And this question, if the answers to this question will help you know which features to put first or in the workflow, what to put first and what to put next. Uh, if someone mostly uses the, uh, the, the app to register people or guest users that come to their company every day, and instead of putting the form at the, at the first page for people to register, you put an admin dashboard to view people already in the building. It doesn't make sense. People have to go always go backwards to go and fill the form and come back to that place. So we need to know which function come first and which one follow. So which areas, uh, what areas of functionalities of the app are most simple? So is there a process that requires filling a form quickly? If something is supposed to be done quickly, then you need to use that one and put it in front before the other features. Okay. So with this, let's see how to pick a screen or keep it consistent. So when you're designing an app in Power App, you know that you have to select either tab uh, tablet or phone. And if you are new to this, you may decide to like, let me go with tablet. And why in the development process, realize that it won't help and you want to switch to phone. Good, you can switch, you can do that. But mind you, it become more difficult if the app has more functionalities. If there are more things in the app, then it becomes very difficult or a bit difficult for you to switch that already existing app in the tablet into a phone form or in a phone form into a tablet mode. So right from the beginning, you need to uh, to know which which other uh, which interface is good for me, either tablet, either phone, which size screen am I going to use? right before you start designing or developing your app. OK, so you also need to make decisions on the prototype. So this is to mostly uh, let the end user understand the process of the app and see how the app should look like. You could, you could do this with Adobe SD. You could do this with uh, uh, Visio, Microsoft Visio, and so so it's pretty simple. You could also use a wireframe to design this and show to the end user. OK, are you good with this? Is it OK for you? This is the process. When you click button A, it directs you to this interface, whereby you have to fill this form and click this button that directs you to other places that you click this and these are the sub and this and that. So this is some, what we call the prototype. And you need this prototype to be shown to the end user to be able to identify if this uh, experience or this process will be good for me or not. So you could put it in just a simple frame like this, like what you see on the screen. Just a wireframe without colors or use Adobe SD to design with more fluent with colors. OK, so talking about those design, um, these big companies has put uh, links or tools ready for us to use to design our apps or to do the prototype. So we have the Fluent UI for Power Apps, uh, Microsoft, and I will put the link in the in the chat later on. Then we have the Design Toolkit for Office, and Apple and Google to have their Fluent UI that is also there you can view. So this. UI prototyping tools just help you to design your wireframe or your, your UI interface and show to the end user. This is not the end, the, the end of the app, but this is just a process for you to show the end user how the app should look like and decide you and the end user if this process are quite okay for you. Okay, so let's view this. Now you could see this is an app that is represented on the top. 
So it to be used for somebody in the office, but someone in the on the phone cannot use this. So it's the same app that is reduced in the size, good for tablet mode. And someone maybe in the warehouse can be able to use this without suffering. And this other one is so in tablet mode, but in portraits. So here the behavior of the app is switching and it depends if you want to make it responsive for everybody to see across all screen. So meaning people in the office that you all just see and people at the warehouse that exist and then people on the field could use this same app but view more details rather than the ones in the office. Good. So as I was saying, this is a single app that is used across multiple screens. You have the desktop, you have the tablets, and then you have the, the, the mobile the mobile size one. So the desktop will be suitable for people in the office, those are using their computers. Actually, the tablet will be used for those, some of those that are in, on the field or at the warehouse. You know, people moving here and there at the warehouse don't need to carry their laptops or desktop along, so they will need a tablet to hold on during their investigation. And the people on the field, like for delivery people, they will need to see items that are visible like this we are seeing on the screen. OK, so yes, it is good to do responsive app in Power Apps. It is very possible to design apps responsible in Power Apps, but there are some pros and cons. So read once, run everywhere. It's pretty simple. You don't need to have multiple apps for different devices. That is a very good one. But now on the cons, much harder to build. But Power App is not like other native apps where uh, building it once and then it goes with other platforms, other sizes, screen sizes. So it's hard to build, maintain and test. And so, and if you come back to your app one day and decide to do some little of uh, maybe upgrade, and you don't know to you touch a control over there and drag it here and there, I mean, your app or that control may lose its responsiveness. So you need to be careful when uh, working back on responsive apps. You need to implement different US in the same so different strategies, if the app was in a desktop, how should it look like? How the data should look like? Should it be bigger? If it's bigger, it will be too much. Should it be smaller? Now, if it's smaller, what about a, a, a phone user? Should it be smaller or bigger? So you need to get all those understanding of the US part of this before you design it. Now, it come to do we need to be consistent to, to do we need to have a, a, a multiple screen or do you, uh, sorry a multiple app or just a one single app that is uh, responsive so it is very difficult as i was saying to design a responsive app in power app design and maintain it is very difficult but if it is possible that the app will be used across uh, different different screen sizes and also if people using the app will view different different things then you may you may think of splitting the app into different different uh, sub apps so instead of having one responsive app which is complicated you could have two or three apps uh, maybe one for people in the office and one for people on the field get so because power apps is a, is a bit limited on that that part they are still improving the uh, the system maybe soon it should be working perfectly but for now power apps does not have that ability for you to design and maintain it as easier as other native apps good so here come the navigate the navigation all right so what you see on our screen here um, you have three sample apps that does the same thing. Okay, so here 
if you if the user is using this app uh, on the go, holding it in the hand, it will be easier for the user to access the menu that are down here. It will be easier for the user to drag uh, the map, but a bit difficult for the easier to use the search. Now the second one is easier to access the down here, easier to search and a bit easier to drag uh, the map. And uh, the third one, it is easier to search, easier to drag, but not easy to reach the menu because you have to send your finger up. Good. So now, which of these three is better? It depends on the US here, meaning how the user is using the app. Is the user, if the user mostly don't do search, I rather search on the map, sorry, the drag the map, the map, the map and uh, navigate, then the first one is good for the user. If the user mostly search and navigate, then the second one is good for the user. But if the user mostly do search, then the third one is good for the user. So all these three are perfect. But now, how the users use this app, that's what determines if the app is better or not. And here is where you come, the designer, to always collect feedback and improve your app. So when you design it in the first position, and realize that most people need to be using the search button, the search field, but is at the top, you can decide to switch to the second one. But when you realize that people don't mostly use the navigations, buttons, but rather search and drag the map, the map, then you use the third one. So all these three here are pretty simple and okay as a UI UX, but depend on how the user will interact with this. Now, aside you prototyping your app, you also need to prototype the UX. It is which feature should come first which one should come last. So the site mapping here will allow the user, so many you need to ask the user when using your app, what feature do you mostly use first so that we can put it at the top and what do you use often? We can put them in the sub menus. So in this example site map here, you have the main features, you have the sub, uh, the same, a secondary main feature, and then in all these main features are, sorry, are sub features. So this discussion must be done with the end user first to understand which feature come first for us to map it on the US site map. Okay, so burger, waffle, and meatballs. And yet, this is not a uh, lunch time. It is just US design. So mostly, when you use your app or when you when when it's those when you check most of your favorite apps, you will be used to this kind of icon that is floppy. That you mostly know that when you see the floppy icon, it is for saving. When you see the X icon, it's for close. And when you see the question mark icon, it is for help. Now, these other navigation tools are mostly uh, in our browsers. We mostly see them. So if you use Office uh, 365 or Microsoft 365, you could see this. That is at the higher level of the navigation. Now, when you, if you are using Power Apps, you could see this mostly, this program menu that hides some menu in. And also, you will see the meatball too. So this one is the higher one. So we we'll mostly put them at the high level. So you need to understand this kind of icons and know where to put them when you are designing an app. So we won't put this meatball icon for a menu icon that when you click on this, it expand the menu for you. No, it is wrong. This is mostly done, or mo mostly when you see this meatball uh, menu, it's mostly used 
just to maybe when you click on it, it show you the copy and paste and some sub uh, menu. So this is called the contextual menu. This is the navigation menu, and this is the high level navigation. And if you have Office 365 or Microsoft 365, you could realize these icons too over there. So is those are common icons that we use or we see in basic apps. And users understand this kind of icons. So when building apps, you need to know where to place them and why it should be there. All right, so the way you present your data. So in this for example here, you have one with a big uh, gallery. So someone in the office is using a mouse for him. This is too big. But someone on the field or in the car, this is quite OK for that person. And if the person uses this phone or this app in a landscape mode, it will be very easy for the person to navigate through. Now, the second one is quite OK for someone to use it in the car, press it because the spacing within the data is quite enough for the person to, to, place, to place there. Now, the third one, um, it is too small for finger to type here. So when you're in the car, you can't use this uh, interface to select and um, proceed. So the fourth one, we realize that it has bigger spaces for users. So this is quite easy for people on the on the go and to be easier too for people in the in the office. So when you look at all these four different one, you try to decide which one best suits my end users. So when you know the one that suits your end users, then you decide how to use them. If most or majority of the users are in the office, then a data table like this may be OK. But if my end users are on the field, this should be better for me. Good. Now, the color harmony. So there is a lot of, or oh, there is a, the big, a big science behind colors. So how we use the colors, how we combine them are very necessary. So when you see this here, we have some few example of color palette or medicine. So you have complementary, you have split complementary. So complementary is one above, one down with both the same distance in between. Then split complementary, there are three colors. So meaning these are the colors you are selecting in developing your app. You have analogous that is having three colors to each other. And you have triadic, tetradic, square, and monochromatic. And basically or mostly every app use monochromatic to design. So with the monochromatic, you select one color and use its tone or its shade to proceed. Now let's see the tone. You have the things, the shade, and the tone. This is how you can the contrast of your colors. So when you select a key color, you may decide to generate a tone for that color or a shade or a tint for that color. Maybe you may not get me. It is quite simple. Imagine this was our and you are using it on a button. So you may like when the mouse when the mouse hover on the button, the button should be deeper. So you use shade and make sure it is a deeper color that you add over there on the hover. Get it. So tint, shade, and tone at how we control the contrast of the app. So let's see some example of apps that are designed with monochromatic uh, color shade. So here it is a blue monochromatic palette that this company use. And the logo is just in a small area here. And in the next screen, you don't have the logo, just a title name. And this app, they mostly utilize the space around it. You could see the way the buttons 
are very big, wide enough for people to use. And then these are their color palettes. So they select two, the main color, the tint, and the shade. Okay, another combination color. So this company, their main color is orange. So aside the orange, they have a lighter one that they use at some parts of the so you could see there are some lighter ones that they use at some parts, but the rest are white. Okay, so when you come to this color one, they are their color, their key primary color is blue. It's the same monochromatic color palette with blue. And uh, they have some images around it, and they decide to blend or they blend in such a way that the image color don't overlay too much and follow the blue palette color. Here they use a little of the blue and then the yellow to make the color of the photos blending. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Camera record. Hello, please. Okay, thank you. All right, so you have the McDonald app that is more colorful because is different than the, the banking apps, whereby bank show figures, McDonald show food. So here it attract the, the, the end user and need more colors. So instead of monochromatic, mono, uh, McDonald use analogous with three different uh, different colors in the set. So these with the red attract the, the end user to, 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 to order more. Because McDonald is food, is not selling figures. All right, so let's see this writings here. The quick brown fox jump over the lazy dog's back. You mostly see this in font. Okay, so all these two, three are the same size, and the yellow one is the bigger one. But because of the color, you realize that. The red one is the biggest. Meanwhile, when you check it in the font, the yellow one is the bigger one. So why is for you to understand which color to use and the weight you put in those colors? All right, so here is a link to get you generate your colors. It is called Canva. So with Canva, you can generate your colors and select the type of color you want, monochromatic, analogous, and whatever color you want. So I will share this link in the, in the chat. And you could see some company use this, that is Microsoft. OK, so the test and the type is. Now, you have black letter. Black letter is a type of uh, mostly people use back in the days for uh, newspapers. So newspapers, if you watch those old old timers movies, you have where they put wanted. You see the wanted is written in this kind of uh, type uh, face. Scripts that look like a handwriting type of. You have serif. So the serif has different different design like this a different weight this is bigger this is smaller and this shape at the top and down of the letters so this is serif and then you have the sun serif the sun serif use the same weight all over the app with no design now for you to understand which one perfects suit your design good so let's look at all these three examples here so here we have the sun serif, the serif, and oh, I need something here. Sorry. Okay. So looking at this, normally this is supposed to be um, the black, the black letter one. I think I missed something. Okay. So when you look at this, so let's take the three rather instead of this. When you look at this, you realize that. When I put a text on the phone, on a mobile phone for somebody to read, this will be quite easy for people to use to read. But this is somehow okay, but not me. 
it won't be it won't give uh, much experience for the user to read and this is barely readable so basically when you use an app mostly or all the app mostly use the sans serif rather than the the serif or the script and they normally don't use the black letter one okay so know how to break the line now imagine this two screen here if i was giving this two screen for me to read i will start reading the top and then i guess gets oh uh, when i take the second one i can i can easily read at least sentences at the top of each paragraph and have insights or understanding what is going on on these paragraphs than this one which is a compact one so know how to break your your, your tests or your lines is also needed also the branding you need to know how to brand the app now most of organization have a what you call the key color so key colors are used to design the app or to, 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 to do their branding you know so this example here show a palette of uh, most companies with their colors so you could see FedEx is somewhere here you have shell you have some you have all the you have some quite some uh, companies with their colors good so we when you get um, a power up to design you need to know which color to choose and which not to choose so when the company gave you our key colors is this then use that and use the the canvas to generate your sub colors for you to able to blend in when you, talk, when you are talking about the colors if not you end up designing something that with colors that don't match a company brand and talking about company brand you know netflix is always red uh, facebook is always blue so this is what you're supposed to know about color branding so when you take coca-cola is red when you take uh, eco bank it is blue so there are some companies when you see their branding you know that this is their branding and this is their main color now some don't have those things but you need to ask do you have any branding color that you can use uh, when developing apps you know so when you're taking an app for an organization you need to ask what are your primary colors or what are the colors of the company that you need to be refresh, referencing in the app okay so as you can see here you have something cool brand so when you see cool brand you actually know at once which color font is this this is coca-cola and when you see this this uh, here what does it tell you this is actually represented by google this is google colors so some colors or font shows you directly the brand of the company so you don't need to put logos all over an app but you just with these colors or this font can easily represent the app and you don't also need to put splash screen that shows a delaying logo you know for the end user to be waiting for the app to load before the person starts using the app because uh, canvas app is mostly based for organizations and organization you don't also you know mostly need to show all those colors uh, all those logos displaying before the main uh, purpose of the app show so the responsiveness uh, the waiting time you don't need to make it wait two months too much is too much it's if you have to put a splash screen once one two second is quite enough to so be transparent in the ui how it is the process everything should be clear enough for the user to understand don't block the ui unless you must so it must be very simple. if you block the ui may block the process so let it be the way it is a very simple um a very simple ui but a lot faster is better done uh, a very complicated UI whereby you need to do some stuff like pictures 
and the user have to wait for features or things to load up. So are you overthinking? Don't. Because if you want to design an app, especially in Power Apps, simply me, I Google them. If I want to design an app, I just Google it. If not, you can just take your favorite app. You look through it. How is this form put? If I'm trying to, to fill a form in, 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 in creating, a, if I want to fill a form, I can easily go to refer back to WhatsApp. You know, when you're creating WhatsApp, how the colon is put for you to put your telephone number and then the, your, your country uh, code and then submit. So you can view the alignment of that and implicate it in your, in your app. You don't need to reinvent the wheel now. Some interfaces are quite down already. You just Google them how to, or buy, uh, this, you just Google uh, UI design apps and you see a lot of those things. You just Google whatever app you're designing. If it is uh, for uh, a service desk, you can just search for it, service desk UI design. You get all those interfaces there and try to understand their design and replicate how you uh, and try to bring it back into your understanding and how the end user will interact with that design so you don't need to go and create a very new thing while well, those things are done and are outside there for you to use okay so the app is not a content the content is the content so here you don't need to beautify the app that much the app needs to be functional just remember that this is power apps and it is used for organizational use. It's not used for WhatsApp chats. It's not used for Instagram viewing videos, not for TikTok. This is for organizational use. It has a function. And if it's to submit data, make sure you put those data first. If it's to interact with data, make sure you put those things first. Not beautify the app too much. Make it simple for the user to use. All right, so resources. OK, so in the resources, I'll drop this soon in the link in the chat for everybody to use. We have the current UI being made by Microsoft. We have the free UI kit for Apple and Google. And you have a responsive uh, layout design that is already in a GitHub. It's already designed, put down there. You just download it, you download and you work on it. And I also have some few uh, other links here for Netflix logo guide and Instagram logo guide. Man. And um, here you come to the end. So if you want any question, you can say you can raise your hand now. And you can also view my blog, Blessings Idea, where I talk about power apps. And coming soon, I'll be talking about controls, controls and, power apps and the rest. You can also link with me on Twitter. I'm, also, I'm always present on Twitter. And voila. Thank you very much. And thank you, Julia. Thanks to Laura Shadrach Bethany for having me today. Julia, over to you. Um, thanks so much, um, Chesco. So I think can proceed on that. Okay. Hi, Shadrach. Yeah, hi, session. So thank you so much. It was quite an uh, insightful session. Actually, uh, I've been doing everything wrong until this session. I was like, uh, now I understood that the app is not the content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also like you need to understand the user first before starting any design and everything. So much, much incredible lessons that I've been able to gain from this session. And thank you so much. Uh, I haven't been uh, like uh, in the first introduction for this session, but I've been able to catch up with everything. And thank you so much, Sesho. So now, like, um, uh, you could also like uh, share every links that you have, and then like uh, let me open it up for any questions. Uh, probably in the next one minute. So if you have any questions, uh, just come off mute and ask the questions, and like feel free also to drop them on the chat. So, if you have any questions, so just feel free to drop them.
Hello. Yes, hello. Um, uh, my question was, um, recently I've realized that most of the apps, uh, they, uh, they try to incorporate the dark theme mode. And uh, I've not heard uh, our speaker talking about the dark theme. So I really wanted to know the dark theme color combinations. Thank you. Mm, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, dark in color combination. And then you see, uh, it is, you know, basically, if you want, the, you can use black or you can use white, it depends. But you have to focus on key color. And the key color is what the company use. So let me show you one. Uh, have a blog about the, the UI, the I mean, trying to get it. OK, so this year talks you about how to design your app in the dark mode function. So let's see the end use. You can see this is the how the output comes. So you can switch to dark mode or uh, the same. Light mode, so this is it, and I still maintain the the primary color some some way out. If you can see that, if that's okay for you, that answer for you. So you can also check the blog how it goes for you to understand how to implement this in your app. Is that okay for you? Um, it's okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for that question. Uh, do we have any other questions left? <clears throat> um, so Shadrach, I see you have a question from Titus on the chat, and he's asking what is the difference between Power Up and WordPress? Okay, Power Up is a Microsoft tool, only for Microsoft, and um, you need to have a license, you need to have uh, an account before you can be able to access this and use it. But WordPress is just a website, like what you can see here on the screen. This is a WordPress that I'm using just for blogging. You know, it's on an app. WordPress is on an app. It's just a website for content like blogging, for e-commerce, and the rest. Is that OK? Power Apps is basically, you won't, use, you won't get Power Apps like this. WordPress is cheap. Like, you can have subscription, but you can also use this for free. You just need to sign in. You just need to sign up, sorry, and it's free. But Power Apps always need to have a license and a monthly subscription for it. And it's another lesson to tell you for, for, for that, uh, how to get the license of Power Apps. And there's also this uh, free uh, Microsoft developer subscription that Microsoft does, whereby you can have a Microsoft Power Apps for free and be using it for development. And it's purely for development purposes. Is that OK? Yeah, so thanks, Chesco, for sharing that. So I just wanted to emphasize more on the M365 developer account. So for every developer, you don't have to worry about paying to use the power up, the power up. So I'm going to drop the link on the chat. So in case you want to actually access power ups and build these applications without having to worry about the cost, you can create a free M365 developer account. So I'm just going to drop that link on the chat and hopefully it's going to help you. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Julia, for that. And also like uh, just something random, uh, like uh, this, Topic actually like uh, brought like uh, took me way back when I was starting on mobile app development. So I used to insert like lots of colors into my applications, decorate them, and everything. So I guess now like uh, <laughs> I'm not in a better position, right? Yeah. yeah. So do we have any other? Also to add up before uh, we call it up. Yeah. Also to add up, uh, this topic is is way bigger than this. You have a way whereby uh, you need to know how to put your code in the app. If there are too much lookups in the app, the app may run slowly and the performance of, of your app will be slow. And if you put too much images on the app, it will be slow. If there are a lot of controls in the apps, 
down to the app will be slow. So those are other topics to related to the UI US of this, but you can't bring them today. And you also have the way uh, using it, uh, make it accessible for visual impairment people and by somebody who cannot see, but be able to navigate through your apps too. So you need to understand those kind of pers the perspective too. And I have some few links here that can help you talk about it. We have low code Lewis. This guy talk about this a bit, and then about uh, the impairment. People, I'll drop it in the in the chat so people can read about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So I think John Mushiri had raised his hand. Amos, uh, could you ask your question? So like we can take one more question and then we wrap it off. So. So Amos, will you go ahead? Yeah, okay, we have a questions on the chat window. Uh, can someone use Power Apps to create a full stack application or use to have to consume other people's APIs and connectors? Okay. Uh, okay. So <laughs> Power Apps is different than native apps, whereby you have this full stack thing, but Power Apps has connectors that you can easily integrate into it. You have more than 100, uh, connectors that you can integrate, SQL, uh, all those kind of uh, API can be integrated into Power Apps. Um, but Power Apps is a bit different on the full stack application development team. But it comes with those kind of possibilities. Is that okay for Kevin? Uh, okay. Power App is actually uh, is meant for organization. Power App is not for users to. It's not, it's not like people just create apps normally and put it on Play Store. There. No, that's not Power App. Power App is basically for um, for uh, organizational use uh, to help automate processes in, in organization, to help uh, solve some quick solutions for people in an organization. That's Power Apps. And it also connects to the main data source that is uh, uh, Dataverse. But you can also connect it to SharePoint, to MySQL, and to any on-prem uh, data source or anything else. It works. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And also, like, uh, I also add something about that. So, like, uh, with Power Apps, you're not limited to the kind of data sources that you have. So like you can just create a data connector that can be able to link with your API wherever your data is stored. So like uh, it's always open for you. So I guess that's it, guys. So like I'm um, hoping to see you in our next session. Thank you so much to our speaker for that uh, like an uh, insightful session. So like uh, uh, you've seen the introduction video on YouTube. So like kindly. Uh, like it, subscribe to that channel. Uh, we'll be sharing the recording. Uh, it will be live in the next 24 hours. So I kindly be on the lookout for that. And then also I've shared a link to our WhatsApp group. So kindly join that. So like we'll be also like sharing more resources that you can be able to access via our WhatsApp group. So uh, it's on the chat window. I don't know if everyone can access the chat window. Yeah. And also, like, we'll be sharing all the links that uh, our speakers sent. So, like, uh, thank you so much for that. So, I'm hoping to see you and have a great uh, evening, day. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so, all. Shadrach, Shadrach, before you leave, um, you can okay. just reshare. You can just reshare the WhatsApp link. So, you had shared the wrong link to the wrong group. So, you can just share link to the Power Addicts okay. group instead. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. Okay. Thank you so much, Julia. Okay, you can, you can so just reshare the, the right.